Hello. Thank you all for finding your seats and taking your seats. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Sparks, and I'm the Associate Dean for Graduate Student Services in the Lynn School. But I'm standing here this morning, or this afternoon, in a capacity of being the coordinator for the Lynn School Diploma Ceremony, because I get the privilege of being able to explain to you our COVID-19 protocols that we'll need to uh, adhere to during the ceremony today. So good afternoon, and in my role as a coordinator, uh, I think that it's just very important that we maintain safe distancing and stay at least six feet from each other uh, as often as we can. I know that this is a celebratory uh, arrangement and it's a wonderful day for our graduates. And so everyone is just very excited and looking forward to experiencing this wonderful day. But we will need to try to maintain our distances as much as we can. Uh, we also need to have everyone, students, guests, and even us on this podium, which is really, I don't want to tell you just how much it's frustrating to me to have to talk through this thing, but <laughs> this is what we must do. And so we need to remain in our seats throughout the entire ceremony and to stay masked. Unfortunately, it won't be possible this year for guests to take photographs of their graduate during the ceremony. I know that a number of you have taken some photographs uh, already as before we got started, and you're very free to take photographs. Well, everything will be in place, and you can take photographs after the ceremony's over. But I need to have all of the guests and all of the students remain in their seats, masked, until it's time for um, the graduates to, to rise and to come to the stage. Thank you all for your consideration and for your collaboration and cooperation during our ceremony with these protocols. Again, we're all very anxious to have this be over and to not have to need these protocols, but we were very blessed this year to be able to have our commencement, our diploma ceremony in person and to be able to have at least one guest per, for graduate students. So thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful day. And at this point, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Stanton Wortham, the inaugural Charles F. Donovan uh, S.J. Dean of the Lynn School. Dean Wortham. Thank you, Dean Sparks. Thank you all for being here. It's a very happy day. I congratulate all of you. It's wonderful you have all worked extremely hard to reach this point to earn the degrees that will be conferred officially tomorrow and will be rewarded today in a ceremonial fashion in our Lynch School ceremony. So our hats are off to all of you and thanks also to all the parents, the partners, the children, the significant others of our graduates. We're sorry that it has to be in this somewhat constrained format, but we're grateful that all of you have been able to come and join your student to celebrate their accomplishment. It's wonderful to see you all even under these um, changed circumstances given COVID-19. I know it's been a struggle for many of you making it through the ending phase of your degrees or the year of your degrees given all the constraints we've been under for this past year. I'm grateful that you've made it, that we've all made it through in relatively good shape. I express my condolences. I know many people have lost loved ones and have faced significant challenges. Many of you I know have children. People with children have had a particular burden through this pandemic, having to do your regular jobs or student work as well as take care of your children. So I admire all of you for doing the work that you've done. But today is a day to celebrate. Today is a day where we in the faculty and your loved ones are able to say congratulations. We acknowledge all the work. We're grateful for what you are going to go out into the world and do. I'd like to just talk for a minute before we start about the mission of the Lynch School, something that I hope will be a continued inspiration to you as you move forward through your careers. The central statement in the Lynch School <coughs> mission has to do with enhancing the human condition, expanding the human imagination, and making the world more just. And I just wanted to say a couple of words about each of these components. One of the things that makes Boston College distinctive is an emphasis on formative education. 
an emphasis that we who are responsible for guiding others, especially young people, as they move forward in life, in our roles as teachers, as counselors, as people who work in organizations where we try to help others and foster their development, we're responsible not just for narrow bands of their abilities. We're not just responsible for the academic content knowledge they know. We're not just responsible for the skills that they learn. We're not just responsible for a particular problem or challenge that they happen to be facing when they come into your office. We're responsible for helping people develop as whole human beings. And the central piece of this that I want to mention today is the concept of purpose. Human lives have purpose. Without a purpose, it's difficult to find motivation. It's difficult to have fulfillment. Many of us pursue more instrumental ends. It's part of being human that we have to do instrumental things. We need to support ourselves. We need to have food to eat. We need to do various things in order to get through life. There's nothing wrong with doing something to get something. There's nothing wrong with being instrumental toward the world sometimes. We are all that way much of the time. But you can't have a consistently fulfilling life over a lifetime unless you take a moment to think about what is the larger purpose? What am I doing here? One way to imagine that is to think that there is a larger moral order. There is something that organizes the world that we are called to do. And it differs for different people. We have different visions of what that moral order is. For some people, it has to do with the vision of how society ought to be. For some, it has to do with an ecological vision of our place in the natural world and sustaining it. For some, it has to do with the religious vision of a divine order. It's not our job here at the university or your job, wherever you will end up working, to tell people what the moral order is and what they have to believe. But it is our place to ask others to reflect on what they believe and what they're called to do within whatever vision of that order they've chosen to embrace. That's what I'm trying to capture with the concept of purpose. I hope that you have had an opportunity. I encourage you as you work with others trying to foster their development. Give them time, encourage them to reflect on whatever purpose they feel called to, not what you think they should be called to, what they are called to. Purpose is a central part of what it is to have a fulfilling life. And I hope that that's something you will be able to take as a distinctive feature of what we're about at Boston College. The second clause in our mission statement has to do with expanding the human imagination. Universities are good at some things and bad at others, but one of the things that universities are good at is they're good at asking people to reflect on how things could be different. We all have basic assumptions in how we think the world works, what we think motivates others, and various aspects of our experience. Those presuppositions are sometimes wrong. Your habitual way of reacting to other people who come from particular groups, reacting to certain situations, the way you think is just natural as to how you should understand your experience is something that needs to be challenged. Expanding the human imagination, the concept here that I would like to make you think about has to do with vision. Vision is a critical thing. It has to do with imagination, with the ability to imagine how your way of reacting to the world might not be appropriate. Your way of understanding how other people think or live might not be right. You have to try to figure out, how can I reimagine my assumptions? How can I consider new evidence that allows me to have a new vision, to step back for a second and reorganize the way I think about the world. Institutions like this are relatively good at asking people and giving them opportunities, data, arguments, such that we are forced to think differently about who we are and why things work the way they do. So vision is a second critical piece along with purpose that comes with our mission statement. And the third part of the mission statement has to do with making the world more just. You may know that about 40 years ago or so, 45 years ago, the Society of Jesus at one of their convocations decided that justice had to be a much more central component of what they did in their missionary work around the world. So in universities like this one, there were reorganizations in terms of the ownership of the institution and there was a redoubled commitment to trying to think about how is it that we can accompany people whose lives 
have, have been led in ways that have been constrained or truncated because of unjust social organization. So this institution has been committed to that for a very long time. And we've all just lived through a year in which we've been forced to confront the fact that we live in a profoundly unjust society along various dimensions. There was the murder of George Floyd and the recognitions about race that came along, but there's also the differential access to healthcare and the differential burden of this disease which has been borne much more heavily by people with limited means, by people who come from certain communities, by people from certain ethnic groups and races. So this is a world where we have all been forced to confront something that many knew all too well. This is an opportunity for all of us who work in institutions that are intended to foster the development of others to constantly keep in mind the fact that the world is not just, the world is profoundly imperfect. And it's our responsibility to reflect on how our work is contributing to or trying to overcome that injustice. If you take schools for a moment, schools are extraordinary institutions. Schools have the capacity to liberate individuals and give them an opportunity to go out in the world and make a difference, to give them chances they never would have had. But schools are also institutions that can constrain, they can sort people in ways that label certain people as not having the potential, as not being educated. Any institution you work in, whether it's a school or an agency or a nonprofit organization, has both the potential for liberation and the potential for constraint and injustice. Both things go on inevitably in human life. We are imperfect beings. But we have a responsibility now that we have been able to see, I think, as a society more broadly, the way that we've been organized in fundamentally unjust ways, to keep this always in mind. So I encourage you, as you go out and do your work, to think of these three dimensions, purpose, vision, and justice. Think of it as a heuristic. Everything you do, if you build a curriculum for your students, if you develop an orientation toward the clients you're going to see, if you help build policies for your institution, whatever your job is, you need to think about how you can help people recognize their purpose and step back and think about the larger implications, the larger moral order that they're called to contribute to. You need to ask them to think in new ways, to have vision and imagination, to recognize things are not always the way we're taught habitually. They're not always the way our friends say that they are. And you have an obligation to justice, to looking for the ways in which our organizations, our institutional structures, systematically disadvantage certain people and how that must be something you fight to overcome, even though that fight is an ongoing one. So thanks to all of you for all the work that you've done. I hope that you will go out into the world and take the knowledge and skills you've learned as well as the character that you have developed here and serve others do something for others, foster their development in positive ways. At this point, I would like to ask Father Michael Davidson of the Society of Jesus, the director of the Boston College Thea Bowman Ahana and Intercultural Center, to please come up and give us an invocation. Father Davidson. And let us pray. We call upon the Lord to bestow on the Boston College School of Education graduating class of 2021 God's richest abundant blessings. We recall the many graces of their time here at Boston College and we recall the challenges this year especially. We recall the many experiences of grief the pandemic has brought death, grief, and isolation. The killing of George Floyd and many other people of color has brought the reality of racism up close. We all have come, we all have become more educated to the injustices, the root systemic causes of racism, and for that we are grateful. In our isolation, you have brought us together in new and imaginary ways. Bless the instructors, administrators, and staff, the mentors, friends, the family members who have accompanied them in their presence 
and their spirit today. For their dreams, bless them. For their wisdom and passion, bless them. For their righteous anger in the face of injustice, bless them. For their self-care, continued restoration of spirit, bless them. For their enjoying the gifts of creation, bless them. For their ability to accept and care and love from others, bless them. For their collaborative spirit, bless them. For their friendship, bless them. For constant reminders to them of how deeply they are loved, continue to bless them. And in the words of John Richardson, artist and writer and minister, our hope for our graduates this day, here and now, in this moment, is a hope not made of wishes, but of substance. A hope made of muscle and bone. A hope that has breath and a beating heart. A hope that will not keep quiet and be polite. A hope that knows how to holler when it is called for, and a hope that knows how to sing. Lord, we pray in gratitude for the songs of this year's graduating class of 2021, and we hope for the continued realization of new songs yet to be sung. We are forever grateful for the hope that this graduating class of the School of Education brings to the world. Go set the world aflame, and may God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Father Davidson. And now, I invite you to receive your long-awaited Boston College diplomas. Your names will be called by Dr. David Goodman, the Associate Dean of Innovation and Strategic Planning, and Dr. David Scanlon, an Associate Professor in the Teaching Curriculum and Society Department. Please bring with you the name card that is on your chair and present it to the faculty member calling your name when you come up to the stage. I am very pleased to introduce our students who have completed the requirements of the Lynch School of Education and Human Development Doctor of Philosophy degree. As I call your names, will our PhD graduates please come forward to accept your diplomas. Congratulations to you all. So please stand, doctoral degree recipients. Kimberly Ashby. <laughs> Maria Baez Cruz. <laughs> Nicole Iris Barone, recipient Recipient of the Mary T. Kinane Award for Excellence in Higher Education. Victoria A.S. Santorino. Agnes H. Chung. Lori Ann Compagnon Dunn. Recipient of the Mary Kim Freeze Award. Kelsey Ruth Erickson Klein. Tara Merkins. Kristen Barstow Mele. Sebastian Monsaliano. Christine Lee Power.
Kristen M. Rene. Sean S. Savage. Zhongfeng Tian, Maria Estella Brisk Award recipient. Danielle Jean Abut. Fartoon Abdul. Catherine Ajuma Adoga. Joseph Matthew Aguilera, the Distinguished Student Teacher Award recipient. Elena Akins. Stacy Lynn Vincent Anderson. Pooja Aradia. Julie Athanasius. That's the nature of Claire Veronica Bagnani. Alexandra Nicole Bailey, the Serena B. Streber Award recipient. Shantheri Kamashi Baliga. Kayla Dulcina Baltazar. Emily Grace Baran. Catherine Elizabeth Berry. Elsa Belido Richards. Ameris Dene Benavides, the recipient of the Mary T. Kinane Award for Excellence in Higher Education. Sarah Carolyn Birchman. Kimberly Connor Blessing. Jamal Bonnet. Elizabeth Campbell. Elizabeth Carosa. Angela Castillo. Jasmine Charles Balin. Lisa Chen. Zenqui Chen. Caroline Choi. Peter Chicaroni. Ashley Vaughn Clark. Siobhan Teresa Coleman. Sean Convoy. Elisa Rowe, the Campus School Students and Families Award recipient and also the recipient of the Bernard A. Stotsky Thomas H. Brown Prize. Cesar Cruz. Edward William Coulinane.
Shannon Cunningham. Michaela Marisa Cunningham. Abigail Curry. Morgan Rachel Duell. Anthony Joseph Rocco DeVito. Mary DeChocho. Anthony DeCantu, the Distinguished Student Teacher Award recipient. Shannon Elaine Donahue. Natasha Dunlip. Isabella Esposito. Marisa Medellane Etri, the Campus School um, Students and Families Award recipient. Virglin Felix Ibia. Angelica Sicella. Casey Jane Flanagan. Allison Elizabeth Frazier. Robin Elizabeth Gaines. Catherine Denise Johnson. Sija Jin. Roman Jinti. Jason Mott Jackson. Carolyn Hubbard. Carolyn Grace Hoyer. Samuel Welch Holmes. Elijah Hodge. Ashling Hegarty. Gabrielle Hayward. Kira Crystal Hawkins. Lucy Madeline Harmon. Lauren Hanley. Maya Jean Haberman. Vashon Gibbons. <laughs> Ashley Michelle Gilbert. <laughs> Tyler Gibson. <laughs> Nora Elizabeth Ghostlaw. <laughs> Amy Gale. Caitlin Jordan. <laughs> Abigail Kowola. <laughs> Hannah Kathleen Kieser. <laughs> Alina Kim.
Kristen King. Maria Platzer, Tasker. Javier Kleber Espinosa. Brittany Klein. Hannah June Klein. Cassandra Michelana Kobelski. Rebecca Catherine Connolly Crane, a Campus School Students and Families Award recipient. Sunia Yansu Kwak. Michael La Camilla. Jacqueline Elizabeth Lacovera. Gerlandi Laguerre. Monica Rose Langfeld. Adina Kempler Levitt. Bridget Eileen Lewis. Lilian Lopez G. Andraji. Kelsey Sheehan McGuire. Stanley Marzik. Barbara Maddie. Devin Noel Pecoraro. Brian Jose Paula Gonzalez. Molly Perizzo. Grace Elizabeth Noel O'Hara. <laughs> Leslie Ann L. Onuoha. <laughs> Margaret O'Connor. Madison Rose Murphy. Aaron Lee Mulvaney. Maritza Yvette Mullervy. Robert Mudge. Jessica Rowe Morris. Allison Virginia Morgan. Juliana Montmini. Emily Bonita Mills. Isabella Mikael. <laughs> Sufia Mahmoud. <laughs> Melissa Maria Mekki. <laughs> J. 
Julia McTeague, Distinguished Student Teacher Award. Kaylee Eileen McLaughlin. Jolene Elizabeth McGlynn. Francesca Robin Pellegrini. Emily Hope Pettengill. Victoria Lucia Pierre. Maureen Lazimon. Nicholas Poling. <laughs> Kayla Elizabeth Pruitt. <laughs> West Price Ashby. <laughs> Jacqueline Louise Rapp. Julia May Rowan. Grace Elizabeth Roberts Ligas. Mesa Dayton Robinoff. Michaela Ryan, Distinguished Student Teacher Award. Kara Ann Santa Maria. Michael Sanzio. Caroline Sayer. John Schmidt. Kendra Julina Sherman. Molly Rose Sloan. Caroline Marie Slota. John Smith. Catherine Mary Smith. Kaylee Francis Warner. Katie Walter Jeffrey. Aaron Walsh, Distinguished Student Teacher Award. Lucy Walker. <laughs> Melanie Walker. C. Wang. Christina Anastasia Lavos. Michelma Teresa Vargas. <laughs> Madeline Ann Van Oat. <laughs> Julissa Denise Valentin. <laughs> Lillian Grace Taya. Greg, Greg Tubman. <laughs> Fong N. Tran. <laughs> Ch 
Kang Kang. Emily Tiki. Danielle Marie Pachada. Chloe Gage Hananega. Jane W. Stevenson. Kelly St. Cyr. Cecilia Maria Spinella. <laughs> Melissa Peg Soleimani. <laughs> Lauren Snyder. <laughs> Cassandra Grace Westner. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle Wokers. Frank Wood. Kron Norville Kennard Wright. Chuman Shio. Huey Cher. Sean Chu. Yu Ching Yang. Megan Catherine Yang. Allison Yari. Matthew Yellis. Kiar Zhang. Megan Zugibi D'Amico. Congratulations to all of our graduates. I'd now like to welcome back to the podium Dean Stanton Wortham. So congratulations again to all of you. We admire you for all the work you've put in and for what you are going to do to make the world a better place as you go out into your chosen professions. It's been a long afternoon with lots of ceremony and lots of applause but let's have one more round of applause for our graduates before we close. Thank you all and have a good rest of the afternoon.